Hello, this is Max Straker. Just want to follow on from uh, this Python video, which I did with uh, Python, Bing Chat, and Astronomy. Um, the original uh, thing was to use Bing Chat to try and see if I can actually get an example of, of doing Kepler's um, planetary motion. Um, I found uh, a bit of code somewhere and ran the numbers and just put it into a script. And um, where's my script? Where's my code? There we are and ran those numbers so if i just run this particular code that i found and it's using a library called um, pi astronomy um hmm, there's that shift run get on with you um it comes up and it does uh this thing here so it's actually just using matplotlib which is quite nice and it actually does a um ellipse and i thought actually that's not quite what i want i think it looks pretty cool but it looks quite advanced. So rather than diving right into that and, 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 and getting a bit more understanding of that, I suddenly thought, no, what I actually want to do is I actually wanted to, to, to sort of see the visual with planets and orbits. And I came across this video here, and this is pretty high powered, and it's actually quite it, it kind of, I, I really like the first sort of half, uh, half of the video where he talks about all of the different things of the planet um, movements and things like that. And he's using the stuff from uh, Jet Propulsion Lab uh, website with all of the information that they actually have on there. The Jet Propulsion Lab are the people who are actually monitoring where all the asteroids are and things like that and to see with all the near misses and stuff. So they've got a great data a bit, a bit of information of a lot of things. Anyway, this chap here is a computer programmer, so he decided he'd watched a couple of videos of other people and all of their orbits were circular and he actually wanted to show actual elliptical orbits um, to actually define those sorts of things. So he has a link to his GitHub page on that. Uh, I downloaded his code. I couldn't get his code to work, which was a bit of a shame because uh, when I looked at his particular code, uh, which is this one called Universe here, he calls in this uh, import Mio um, and he says this is where you'll find this one for actually the repo for that. It's not there. I can't find this blob repo at all. So in the end, I um, uh, went and found a Mio Pi uh, file somewhere else, put it in the same directory, still doesn't fire up. So in the end, I couldn't use it. But it was a pretty serious sort of bit of code. And it's got about 800, 788 lines of code. So it was a bit intimidating. So I decided to go completely other end to the really simple one. So there's this young lad here, and he basically goes through the script uh, for writing uh, this one here, which is doing all the orbits of all of the planets going around the sun. And it's given the vectors as it's going through and traveling. And what he does is he writes line by line by line by line. Whoops, what happened to there? Um, if I just go into play, if we come to a point here, you can see he does line by line by line and he actually just writes it and talks it all the way down and he goes through all the steps of it. Uh, basically, each time you, it, 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 that's a, 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 an item of turtle, dot turtle, which is an object, and then from that object it assigns a whole lot of things like a circle and things. I don't know, I had come across the turtle library before, but that is a visual library, so I quite like the fact that you're, you're actually displaying. And I think that's one of the things which uh, Python I find I love the panda stuff and things like that. Matplotlib sort of good, and you get a little bit of visuals. But I quite like the fact that he could uh, that the one through here. Now the other thing which I liked about that is that there's no code given for this. He doesn't actually give a link to the actual code. You've got to write it all manually. Now I do have a little bit of a grief with some of the people who actually do really interesting videos, but they don't give you the code. So um, I'd found this nice little tool inside of um, Power Tools, which allows you to do that. So I've actually got it under Control, no, I've got it under Shift Alt T, and what it does is it turns the uh, screen grey, and then you can just highlight the text that you want. So you can do this in a, um, you can do this in uh, uh, on a web. On, on a web page or so if you're doing cutting and pasting it will actually just do a straight screenshot through there and it just puts it into your um, uh, clipboard and then if you paste it in obviously that little cursor where there's a big lump of the cursor that's going to do something weird and then the other thing that sometimes happens you see this is something like 0 0.8 and it sometimes misses them out and it puts a no sorry instead of putting a zero it puts the letter o in instead so there's a little bit of tidying up and sometimes it doesn't do the spelling but it gets you three quarters of the way there or quite a lot of the way there that you're speeding up what you're actually doing anyway so and and i use a lot of find and replace once i set up one thing i can actually go through and modify it quite a lot 
Um, so I, as an exercise, I actually just went through and did the code, and I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll learn a, a little bit about what's actually happening about that. So the original code that uh, he has on there, we can actually just demonstrate that one. Um, and uh, this is the original one. I, this is what I quite like about the Turtle Library, is it sets everything up first, and then it starts the motion, um, that I think is quite nice. Um, but when I looked through the end, I suddenly thought, well, there's a couple of things that are happening. I also quite like it's got the moon's motion around the sun, but it hasn't got a tail on like the other objects and stuff. So I thought, oh, I'll see what I can do about that. So I started to have a little bit of a play with it. And uh, uh, I think, no, this is the one I think I, I've got. It's my one here. So my one is, is, the, is the same as the other one through here. Except what I wanted, I, I wanted the equinox on it and I wanted the solstices on it as well. So that when I'm actually visually eyeballing something and how it's moving, um, I can actually see as a sort of a reference point of where it's going, you know, that it's going 90 or, or whatever degrees. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted a pause button so that you can sort of say, well, things are all happening everywhere, just stop a minute, let me sort of get my head around what's actually happening. And the other thing on here is I started to put a tail onto the moon, So, and what I ended up with was this seriously cool, um, oh sorry, it's on one, uh, graph. I did find the flashy lights a bit annoying, so if we just look at the, the code that I took, so I got his original code and then I actually just modified. So a lot of the times I actually like to have the variables at the top so I don't have to hunt through the rest of the script and then I can modify, do a tweak at the top and obviously it'll modify down. So I can choose my pause key. I'm a lefty so I want a pause key on the left hand side. You might be a right pause so you might want a, 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 a P for pause or something like that. And then I want to be able to a, a, a adapt the speed and I also want the, the flashing uh, data show, I want to modify that. Um, and the pen thickness is coming through, then the diameter of all of the objects. So I used the sun as a reference, which was started off as uh, a size eight, and then all of these other ones were a ratio of that, so 1.2, etc. So I just used eight as the uh, as the denominator, or whatever it is, and then I, all of the other ones were ratioed accordingly. So if I if I went from eight to three, all the other sizes would modify again because I found that the 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 spheres or the circles were a lot bigger than the tails and stuff so I found that and then some of the colours I thought were a bit off so I started to play with that but when I sort of got into the feel of what this was doing basically it's working on vectors and it's just saying for here we got for Mercury it goes forward five and at the same time we're going to go left 2.4 so that's basically for every two forward we go one to the left and we get down to the very end of Neptune and we go five forward and 0.61 left so I was suddenly thinking well what are those ratios and things like that so when I was looking at this and and so when, when we look back at here it's actually all moving around and doing that sort of thing so I suddenly looked at the planets and I was suddenly thinking, right, okay, then the, the orbit of, of Mercury is 88 days. The orbit of New Neptune is 165 years. So there's a big di difference between these sorts of things. The orbit of Earth is 365. The orbit of Mars is 687. So depending on your diameter, and if you're moving at the same speed, it's got to be a certain percentage to actually get it so that you can get those sorts of percentages through there. So if we go and look at that, I don't think they're working. Like the Earth is most probably on its second orbit through here, and this one's just coming most probably two-thirds of the way round. Now, if that's in years, and that's only 365 days, then this is moving a lot faster than it should be. It should be going a lot slower. So I'm suddenly thinking, do I actually want to start calculating all of those vectors and doing that sort of thing through there? And uh, so I think one was paused through there. So at this point in time, I suddenly thought, well, I've got something working. It's not working right. Now, I'm still asking this question um, that I sort of was thinking in the second video of the launch window. Again, I think I've finished that science fiction book, but it's about the launch window from Earth through to um, Mars and how long it takes. So where, if you did the launch window on this one here, it kind of clearly shows that they're off center, that at this point in time, 
the, the distance between Earth and Mars is a lot less than it is on this side here. So obviously you'd want to actually let the rocket, the rocket go off on this side, but you wanted to make sure that Mars actually came around at the right point. So if you, if you got there too quickly, then you'd actually have to wait around until Mars came along, and that would be efficient. So it was sort of just, I just wanted to get the feel about um, launch stuff. And as a designer, I, I kind of work from a visual uh, perspective and things like that. So I've got a tool, I've got a simple thing. It's not quite working right, but it's got the idea that I can sort of get my head around some concepts. Um, but the timing's not quite right at this point in time. Uh, so I suddenly thought, let's just pause it at that point in time with that one. I found a third video that did this planet simulation and he uses this forces equal to the uh, gravity constant whatever it is the mass of one planet the mass of the sun divided by the inverse square law of the distance uh, and in astronomical units or whatever to get the, the gravitational pull to do that at the beginning each of the planets actually has to have an initial angular motion so that when the gravitational pulls you then get a vector so you get its, its original forward momentum, a, a momentum and then the gravitational pull is giving it a lateral component so that you end up with a, a, a vector component coming through. So um, in this particular one through here with Tech with Tim he ended up giving a link to uh, a GitHub where you could actually download the code. So I downloaded the code and I fired it off and I said, I thought, oh, well, maybe this is something to, to, to work with because of the fact, um, oh, run, uh, T is not defined. Where's T? I'll put a T in there, Sift. Oh, I hate it when he goes to line one and does that. Let's just kill out of that. And uh, here, here he's got this one coming through. Now the other thing with that, the other one was done with Turtle. This is done with Pygame. So he's using a different library, but I quite also like the visual component of it and stuff like that. So I thought, oh, this is quite cool. And these numbers as it blasts around is the kilometre distance from the sun from the centre of the planet. I think it's from the centre of the planet. Anyway, what he's trying to say with that one is um, that it's actually moving as an ellipse, although it's shown as a circle in a way. Um, is that there is a change in distance between the sun. That number doesn't stay static. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I should start exploring this one. Now, again, this one doesn't have a pause either. So um, I started to play with that, this, uh, this one as well. So that was the original. So this is one which I put in as a pause into here. And uh, I'll go back to what we had originally. So that was 60. And that one there is um, the original speed he initially worked off a day which was 3600 seconds in an, uh, an hour times 24 hours and it gives a number whatever it is i can't remember what it calculated to do and we can run that one through there and this is what happens so this is and now i can actually just hit pause at any point in time now i ended up with the equinox which i wanted to add to it and i ended up with the solstice is coming through there so um uh, what I also did was this thing called a day step. So it counted the number of um, uh, iterations that it went, the, the days that it actually counted through, that we had that initial counter that it uses through there. But when what I noticed was look, that the Earth has gone through half of its orbit and it's already taken 911 days. So you suddenly think, well, How's it going to get to 365? It's already gone to 900. So I suddenly thought there's something slightly wrong with that, um, is that it, it's going a lot faster than what we're doing. So I went back um, to look at the planet motion. So that uh, Mercury 88 days, Venus 224 days, um, Earth 365, and uh, Mars 687. So Mars was still going once around in the time that Earth had actually done two orbits, just about. So this is sort of indicative of this. This has done a quarter and this has done a half. So by the time this has done one, this has done a half. By the time it does another one, then this would have done the second half. So again, I like the pause that I can stop it at a point and suddenly saying, what's actually happening there? And then we've got Venus coming around to here. But what I'm ended up with is, is again, if I start this off again and we ended up where it stops, 
we ended up with about 1800 and I ended up with the different estimates if I just tap tap that again it ends up about 1830 1840 days so I did a little bit of a back of an envelope calculation so I ended up with 3600 times 24 which ended up with 86,400 so that was equivalent to a day in seconds I then said well okay then that was what's being counted if you look at the code do, 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 do. the code itself somewhere's got that time sleep time sleep is equal to that 3000 so it's done in seconds is what it's doing which is saying it's a day and then it's got a, a, a something that's doing now what I ended up doing was I said a day step was the time step which is this um, 1800 or whatever it was divided by itself so that I got a number one so each time it did one of these it counted one as a day so that's what I was doing so instead of doing it in seconds I was actually just doing it um, as, a, as a counter to see how many days that I've got so um, going back to my back of an envelope thing I ended up suddenly thinking 1840 so it took me 1840 to do an whole Earth orbit. Now I know that a whole Earth orbit should take 365.25 um, uh, because of the leap year. So when I actually divided 1840 by 365, I ended up with it being a factor of five. So it was going five times as fast as what it should. Do, or sorry, it was going yeah five times. So uh, it was it was recording things. So what I needed to do was to take this number here and multiply it by this number here to get this number here. So I ended up with this 400, 400 whatever it is, it's five times the other one anyway. Um, and then I use that. So when I put that in there instead, let me just cut that out there and, oops, control, oh sorry, X, and then control V and put it into there. And I do that. So we leave it as the original 60 and we just run that. Sorry, I better kill it. Good and we run that one now it's going like the clappers and in fact it's going too fast to actually figure out what's actually happening it doesn't want to stop or do anything so we just stopped that one through there and i thought whoa a bit too fast for me so i took the the, the refresh timer down to five frames per second and then this is what it came up with so now i can actually just pause it at an interval now mercury and venus both start off on the uh, if this is the spring then this is the autumn equinox and um, uh, whatever the horizontal line and Mars and uh, uh, Earth have start at this point in time so when I start going through here I can actually pause there about so the mercury's gone shot past but it's about 96 days so we said 88 so it's about right where we should be so we look at Venus now and Venus should wallop that line about 240 days, uh, 224 days, 221. So we're about right there. So if I carry on with that one, restart it again with the W key and come round to Earth. As I hit Earth, we end up with about 361. And I think if I get it to actually hit this tail point here, it ends up with 366. And then if I let it go again and then just get Mars. Now Mars should be uh, 680 odd ish ish. And this comes through about there. So 681, I think it's 687. So we're about right. We can also suddenly see the, uh, uh, this uh, distortion coming through here as the elliptical um, uh, thing as you can see they're all off center so that you can see some of them although you see that Mars and Earth is not that um, off that much off center and you can also see that the Venus is getting thicker so every time we're doing uh, a, 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 an orbit uh, it's it the, the orbit slightly shifting so that you can see there is a little bit of an ellipse in, in the orbit through there but it's not quite right so I've actually had to do a little bit of a fudge in there now, when I watched his video for this one here, and he takes a, 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 a good time to actually go through all the stuff, a bit of the science and everything like that, he references this particular one, which is the simulating the planet orbits. Um, and this one here is he uses the mass from inside there or the physics from inside there. And this is a turtle input, but it's nowhere near as sexy as his one. So if we run that particular script, using his um, the turtle physics one and we run it here 
Have we got it? Yeah, we should be running. Oh, shift run. Uh, sometimes that just needs a little bit of a kick in the bottom. This is what happens. So if we look at this, while it's doing all of these incrementations, each little dot through here is in fact a day. So it's actually doing the count of the number of days. The red one is Venus and the blue one is Earth. So it's only there's only Sun, Earth and Venus. And this part here is describing uh, this is what's being printed out. So the body name, the body, uh, the pixels divided by the AU, which I think is 250 divided by thing or whatever, but it's doing something else. And then the body.py, oh no, it's body.px, uh, so it's, it's giving uh, most probably uh, different vectors, so the Y vector and the X vector and things like that. Oh no, there's the V, and then the velocities of, of the things coming through. So there's a nice bit of math through there. So what we can actually see at this point in time, um, so this one seems to be going quite good. We've got the gravitational constant, we've got the AU and somewhere, so we've got gravitational constant, and we've got the AU distance, and I think that's been converted from AU into things. So when we come around with, with um, uh, uh, Venus, uh, if we get down to about 224 days when it hits this point, then we know that this is a bit more accurate. So if it does that, and it seems to be counting correctly, like we're getting around for half the period of Earth. So if it's 365 days, then it's about 180. So we're about 180 and we just hit that point. So this seems to be counting correctly for its, its actual orbital motion. So in fact, this would be a good one for actually adding those other bodies on. So this one did actually create a class um, that is then using to actually run the rest of these things through there. And then it's got these other um, functions within that class that are doing that. And right at the end, he's actually got the sun, he's got the earth, and he's got Venus coming through there. And uh, he's going through and doing those descriptors. So the only thing which I think I modified on here is um, for body in bodies, is using the pen up so you actually get discrete dots whereas mine's actually aligned through there. So this one's worth doing and maybe taking some of this data through here and putting it down in a window down the bottom through here to describe that. So this one seems to be actually doing the math, although again, both of them look very circular to me. Um, and it'd be interesting if this is run maybe 10 or 15 times, just a, a, a 10 or 15 orbits, to see if there's a, a, a bit of movement in the orbit such that they start to um, uh, grin up. And then maybe you know, some more aesthetics with some of the things do there, put an object at the beginning, a, a circle at the very beginning. So that was actually quite good. Um, so I, I like this one from, from that point of view. So the nice thing with this, this one starts with them both on opposite sides. So from this point of view, I could have Earth and I can actually have Mars, wherever Mars lo located, and actually see if it tracks through. And I think the math would actually work fine. So that's maybe worth investigating more. But at this point in time, um, uh, I ended up coming through here. And the last thing that I just want to show you is this thing called uh, Orbit. Now this orbit view is from uh, Jet Propulsion Library and it's, a, it's the orbit viewer. If we come through here, it's look at SSB, you can look at one specific thing, if I just look at Sun, um, and then you can look from above, you can look from uh, uh, the ecliptic, which is the plane through the Sun, so if there's a plane through the center of the Sun, outwards on, on the sun's equator, if the sun's actually got a vertical axis, then all of the planets roughly sit on there, but you see some of them are out of the ecliptic. So uh, where the ecliptic line is here, um, all of them have got a slight tilt to the ecliptic. So that's interesting to actually see. Or you can actually look from Earth, so you can visualize where those are from Earth, so if I, and, and, and you can do some timing through here. And inside the settings as well, you can actually turn on other things like the uh, ecliptic grid. If we just go into, uh, we come back out of there and go from, look from above and zoom in. The zoom in and zoom out, I can't pan any further up on this one here. So what you can do with the settings is that you can suddenly say, well, no, don't show us the outer planets or any of those. So only show us the inner one through there. Um, so if we just zoom into these, what we can do is we can increment by a day. Um, so sorry, I better just get out of that.
and uh, we can go and say to there. So what we can actually do is we can increment by a day or an hour or uh, we can select days of when we actually want to start. I think it's pretty much set up to roughly where we are at this point in time when we're incrementing from. And down in the bottom left-hand corner, it actually does that count on the UTC for that point in time. So as we go through, it's doing the counter. I've actually just zoomed out a bit um, through here. Maybe I wonder what happens if I just, um, sorry, zoom out. I want to zoom out a bit. Um, and sometimes it works. No, it's not. It's not showing me any more of that. It's it's actually um, not helping at all. So, and and the other one is that I can I can set a, a period of motion that I actually want. Say, uh, get off you. Uh, say I get um, a week, and then I can actually go through and see where things are. Now, if we just pause this a minute, you can actually see for the Earth orbit. At this point in time, it's a lot further away. At this point over here, it's a lot closer. So therefore, I can actually say, well, uh, OK, then, if the Earth is at this point in time, as in the closest that it is to Mars, roughly, we'll just say that. If you, if you sent a rocket out now directly to Mars, and it took so many days, is the, so let's just say it took um, 88 days, or no, no, let's just say 10 days because I don't, don't want to take this out. Um, that, that, so we use a, 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 a week there. So 7, 14, 21, um, 7, 14, 21, 28, uh, 35. So let's just say 35. So I can't remember where Mars was. So if it's only say so many weeks, five weeks, it's not going to be in the location. You, you know, you'll be hanging around here. So you've got to sort of um, uh, wait until Mars is in the right location such that when you, you project out. So that's the launch window. So, so this is good for that I can actually play around with to sort of get an idea of what the launch windows are and how um, wide they are. But it also gives you the idea of you only need so much fuel and you only need the minimum amount of fuel if you get your launch window right, is that when you launch from Earth, by the time you actually get, Mars is actually just coming up to where you actually need to be. So you're not hanging around or anything like that. So I can do my little bit of mental exercise that I need for the visuals through here. But it's also the fact that um, uh, this code here seems to simulate the planets very, very well. Now I've got a feeling that um, uh, for this one here, he's got a slight error in his code somewhere because uh, the orbits don't quite work. And it'd be interesting to see, um, again, he's got quite a small window. He's got an 800 by 800 pixel, is to maybe make the pixels a little bit smaller so that the inner planets are further in to look at the outer planets. So get those inner planets working to get them to actually do the counts that they want and then to go through. So um, this one seems to be the better one to pursue. So at this point in time, I sort of had something, I've got an idea, I've got a tool that I can actually experiment to, to, to answer the qu mental question that I sort of started off on this whole journey on, which was basically, one was the launch window and two was actually the Kepler equations in a way. Um, to see to, to actually calculate the orbits of the planets and stuff like that and I feel that I've done, traveled quite a way on that and, and I think I just want to pause it at this point in time um, I, I feel as I, I pushed it to a certain extent I might explore this one here with the turtle coming through a, a bit further um, now what, a couple of the things because I was jumping around between different bits of code um, in this one we're using turtle and in this one using uh, uh, Pi game um, I didn't really want to read through all the documentation and I actually used Bing to actually say well look if this is my thing where I'm using uh, and I'm using uh, whatever one uh, uh, the library for this one so this is Pi game write me a bit of code that I can actually do that little display down for the timestamp so I finally got the code through here that it did it for me so that I could quickly, so I didn't actually have to go through and do a whole lot of exercise. I could actually just use this and adapt it. And I said, well, this is what the rest of my code looks like as part of it. And I just gave the actual definition of the, the, the main uh, program that was actually running. And I said, it's got to fit in there somewhere. And it gave me something to be able to do that. So I was able to actually adapt that code. So I actually found that Bing Chat worked quite well to help me out with that. It speed me up a lot more than if I was doing it myself. And, and that's what I do find myself. Personally, I can take an awful lot of time uh, 
trying to solve a really trivial thing where I've actually got the error and it's a really simple error that I just don't seem to pick up. So I found that quite useful for that. This one here, it does not look pretty. Um, I quite like the fact that I've got the earlier simulation from this one here where he's got the visual imagery at the back. Um, if he's got Doors. No. Yeah. Space. Anyway, we, we, we've seen his one through there. And uh, I, I can sort of take his background because that's done in Turtle as well and uh, do some little adaptions based on that and, and use this other one. And again, I quite like the fact that he's got the counter in, in the bottom that I would actually maybe just have a window doing those, those iterations through there and writing it up. I don't find that they're too offensive um, when you do that count um, inside of here where it's doing those and you know you can put them discreetly down in the bottom corner and make them quite small so that they work but this th this sort of makes sense um, and I can sort of see what what's happening through that particular one through there so at this point I want to stop this um, because I'm suddenly thinking I pushed it as far as what I want to do at this point in time I sort of got a better understanding of what's actually happening. I may want to go back and do a little bit more for the actual Kepler orbit itself. But for what I wanted it for, which was the planetary things, I'm sort of getting the code so, so I can explore it further. The next thing is my next little project is when I was going through into the JPL um, area through here, um, uh, not on this page, but what it's got is it can actually do uh, ephemeris. So it can actually say where planets are going to be at certain times. So you can end up with a chart, which is basically a table of celestial bodies. And what I thought, well, it would be quite nice to actually create an ephemeris of a lot of the planets um, on a daily basis, of maybe on an hourly step, and that you, you can actually just run a script and you can actually just get that data and it pertains to your location where you are on Earth. And then it sends you an email. Because I suddenly thought, well, you could actually set out something, but if it was an email, then I can actually just look at it on my mobile phone. So if I'm walking the dog in the evening or something like that, and there's stars and things about, um, I can add to that. And also it's something else, uh, you know, it sort of gets me engaged a little bit with that sort of information, especially when I have that information at hand and I built it myself. And also I can sort of add to it. So if I wanted something like the International Space Station or another specific satellite, I can actually start looking at viewing those particular ones through there and seeing if I can actually identify them. So I thought that would be another nice little exercise. So I really just wanted to kind of cover uh, my journey so far with doing the, the orbits and the planets and the things like that and, uh, and, 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 and leave it paused at this point in time. I might do a second one and elaborate a bit further on this particular um, uh, uh, one through here because in some ways if the math is all working through there this is a good thing to do. So from my point of view um, I can take it, I can break it and then I can rebuild it and reuse the code again until I actually get a good feel for it to actually develop something that uh, I quite like. But I do like on this one the fact that each dot is a day so you're kind of clearly seeing the steps of those through there. So it's kind of visually, if, uh, it, so I want to get Mars on there and I want to get Mars aligned with where Earth is at a specific point to see how Mars tracks so that I can actually visual see at what point in time it's going to land in that you've got that um, launch window and, and I suppose that also then you've got to calculate what's the most efficient duration like there's no point in getting a, a launching to a point of which you've got to wait for you know another 10 days before the planet comes out you might as well just go more slowly and 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 land there and you're using less fuel so therefore your rocket needs to be lighter and, uh, uh, and 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 you're doing it more more efficiently and more effectively as well. So um, that's just another thing that I'm, I'm sort of. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to say what if and then try and describe those sorts of things. So um, there's some nice code out there, and I, I've, each time I play with Python, like I've actually the, the Pi games and the Turtle for actually describing visually the images and things like that. I find those quite good. I've, Matplotlib I like. 
um, and uh, I played a little bit with Seaborn. I need to do more with some grass and stuff like that, especially with the planters and the data analysis. But I'm quite enjoying what's actually been doing here because uh, obviously some quite smart people have actually been doing some stuff and uh, it's nice to see their code and to see things working. So uh, one thing I do want to draw your attention to, all of this information is there uh, with my code. I think I've actually just called it, so I I, all of these I've just called orbit count 1, 2, 3, 4, or 3A, um, and 5. So 3 and 3A I think I've just said a turtle and stuff. Where, where am I? I'm in uh, Google. Where's Goggle? I haven't got Goggle up here. So it's actually files. So I've actually named them and I've just got the files inside there. The one thing I do want to draw your attention to, um, uh, sometimes this one needed a, an image, a GIF file for the background for it. <coughs> they didn't supply one, so anyway, it had it to be of the proportion of the thing, which is 1750 by the height of a thousand. I found one. Now, I tend to work, uh, I've, got a, I've got a file with all of my Python scripts in it. Um, a working directory, if I just collapse that. Um, so I actually just go to the head of it, um, so I don't go into a subfolder because sometimes I'm jumping between uh, different areas. I might suddenly explore my electricity, I might suddenly do astronomy, I might suddenly do my auto logger. So I like to not be able to kind of go into a different window and things like that. I can jump into the same one. So my path to certain files ends up being longer. Because if I actually just go and just uh, go into the astronomy one through there, and if I'm actually, sorry, we'll actually go into that image file. Um, so astronomy, and we want to go into orbit count three. And if we just get that spaceship through there and we copy the path. Um, and this is why I've had some issues with the paths. Because I'm in Python working, this is the path that I have to have. So it has to be astronomy, forward dash, and then forward dash for the next one. And so if you're, I've just uploaded these things and forgot to do it. So you may have to blow out the astronomy and things if you're running from that particular folder. That's the path of that actual file. So it's in the folder there. The paths are going a little bit longer. Normally I split the path separate to the actual file itself. Um, so if I'm actually running them in the same folder on a different things, I, I script them on the server or something like that, I can actually just modify the path to nil. So just be aware that you may need to do that as well. So I hope you found that of interest. I've actually had a great lot of pleasure learning about the turtle, um, uh, uh, using the turtle um, library and also the um, uh, Pygains one. And it's at a limited level, but on, on this one here I've actually found uh, they've been quite used to the fact that I've got these other visual methods of actually doing things rather than just matplotlib. Um, so um, that's pleasing with py uh, 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 Python for me as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Thank you.